Well, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So if you don't know, today starts Autism Awareness Month. You know, to me, this is a really special month, and that's because I'm so privileged and blessed to really have found my passion and my desire and like my reason for being in my career, which is to work with kids with autism. Something I've been doing for 15 years for my entire adult life. It's something that I love. Um, if I could go back and do it again, I would never ever do it differently. I would do the same same thing. Of course, we've all made mistakes, but I would pick the same field and do the same thing. And I know that many of you get into this field because like me, you want to work with kids and maybe it's not autism, maybe it's something else. But I know how wonderful it is to wake up getting to do what you love every day and really just feeling that so fulfilled by your career. And I want that for all of you guys, which is why I started my exam prep company. So here's what I'm going to do. For the month of April, I'm going to be posting a daily video going over mock questions. For many of you, you're phenomenal behavior analysts. You know how to help kids. And this stupid task is just in your way. Well, I'm here to make sure it's not in your way of getting to do what you love because it feels incredible. So to do what we're going to do over these videos is each day is going to have a topic. And the topics are actually selected by my coaching students. Some of the questions are going to be written by me and some of the questions are written by my coaching students. I always tell people the best way to study for this, this exam is to write out examples of applying the content because the reality of it is, is that you don't need to memorize this stuff. You need to be able to apply it. It's not only going to make you a better behavior analyst, but it's what's going to help you pass this exam. So this today's video is going to be, there were all questions written by my coaching students. I didn't write these questions, but I'm going to go over them with you. They wanted to know what's the difference between masking and overshadowing. So if you get a question, how do you know whether it's masking or overshadowing? So I'm going to pull up the questions. Um, you're not going to see me because you guys tell me that, that it makes it harder to read the questions. But I'm going to go over eight different questions to show you the difference between masking and overshadowing. Okay, guys, and welcome back. So let's read these questions. So like I said, we're going to learn the difference between masking and overshadowing and how to pick it out in questions. So first, let me just review what each one of these things is. Masking is going to be when someone intentionally does not show a skill they have because they don't want someone to know they have that skill. It could be simply a child doesn't want to answer a question because he's embarrassed by his peers. Maybe your uh, friend told me the other day they were working in a kitchen and they spoke Spanish, but they didn't want anyone to know that, right? So they pretended they didn't speak Spanish so they can understand what everyone else was saying, but they didn't know they understood what they were saying, right? That would be masking. It's when you intentionally do not show a skill you have. Overshadowing is when you have a skill but you're not able to use it for some reason. It could be that there's something in the environment that's making it difficult. Like let's just say a child has a hard time concentrating and let's just say they're in a classroom where there's a lot of noise. That would be an example of overshadowing. So a really good example of overshadowing is a lot of you guys say you get distracted when you're taking your exam and people are walking in and out of the room, right? And maybe it distracts you and causes you to get an answer wrong. That would be overshadowing. So it could be something in the environment. It also could be internal. It could just be that a person's not feeling well. You know, for me, I had planned, I had really big plans to put out a lot of content this year. And that was overshadowed. My ability to, to use that behavior of creating content was overshadowed by the fact that I got sick in January. I'm still recovering from that. Not 100%, but I'm getting there, right? So that was overshadowing. So let's, now that we know that, they give what they are. Let's look at the examples of these questions and let's try to answer each one of these questions and pick out how do we know the difference between masking and overshadowing. Okay, so let's go over this question. It says, Julie is a candidate preparing for her ABA exam. She knows the content and has practiced multiple times how to complete questions under pressure. However, when she is presented with the test in the testing center, she was unable to complete it within the required time. She was capable of doing an exam in less than four hours and has done so many times with mock exams at home. 
Her inability to complete the exam was likely due to anxiety at the testing center. What is this an example of? Well, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be masking or overshadowing, right? That's what this is about. Masking is going to be when you're intentionally hiding. So is she intentionally hiding her skills here? Or is she not able to use the skills because something's getting in the way? In this case, she's not able to use the skills because something's getting in her way. That's the anxiety that's overshadowing. So that's how you're going to answer this, is you're going to ask yourself, is the person doing this on purpose? If so, it's masking. Or is there something getting in the way of the person being able to do this? In which case, it's going to be overshadowing. Okay, so let's look at this question. It says, Joseph is very good at math. However, in the classroom, while he was taking his math test, there were kids playing soccer right outside the classroom. They were making a lot of noise, and Joseph got distracted and made silly mistakes on the test. What is this an example of? So again, if we want to know if this is masking or overshadowing, we're going to ask ourselves, did Joseph mess up the test on purpose because he doesn't want someone to know about his skill? Or was there something that prevented him from doing his best, from showing the skills he had? In this case, it's going to be the second, right? This is also overshadowing. The noise outside overshadowed his ability to perform the behavior of doing math. So that's how, again, you're going to get the answer to this question. So let's look at another example of this. Okay, so this question says, Maria knows how to play the guitar and multiple other musical instruments. Whenever she's alone, she enjoys playing the instruments. One day, a uh, her husband told a friend how well she plays. Maria's friend asked her to play for her. Maria responded that she was not really good and did not play the instrument in front of her friend. What does this demonstrate? So again, we're going to ask yourself, did Maria intentionally hide her skill or was there something that was preventing her from being able to use her skill? In this case, she did it on purpose. She, she masked, right? This is masking. She pretended she wasn't good at the instrument when she really was, and she refused to play in front of her friend. So this is going to be masking. Okay, so let's go over this question. It says, Dawn loves to read chapter books. She frequently sits in her room and reads with soft music playing in the background. After school one day, she decided to read in a coffee shop. The coffee shop was playing extremely loud music, and she couldn't read her book. What is this an example of? By now, you know the question. Did she do it on purpose? Nope. To hide something? Nope. So it's overshadowing. Something prevented her from being able to read. In this case, the loud music. Peter loves to do ballet, but he never does ballet in front of his peers because he does not want them to know he is a ballerina. What is this an example of? Again, you're going to ask yourself, did Peter do this on purpose? Is he doing this on purpose? Is he pretending he doesn't have a skill or something preventing him from using the skill? In this case, he's pretending he doesn't have the skill. He's pretending he's not a ballerina, so it's masking. Okay, so let's look at this question. It says, Jack knows how to do gymnastics and even won several gymnastics competitions. However, he does not want his friends at school to know. One day at gym class in school, they did gymnastics, and Jack pretended he did not know how to do gymnastics. So what is this an example of? By now you should know this is going to be masking because he did not show his skills on purpose. Okay, let's go over the next question. This one's based upon a true story. Diana's in my coaching group, and her dog one day was distracting her. And she used that to write a question about overshadowing, which is great because you guys can use real life examples, things that are happening in your everyday life. If you can apply the concepts to that, it's going to really help you understand them and pass this exam. So I already told you this one's overshadowing. It says Diana was watching the cohort class and was learning, but her dog kept jumping on her lap, which was distracting and preventing her from focusing. What is this an example of? Okay. And again, this is overshadowing. Okay, guys, so let's go over. This is our last question on this topic. Mary's a very good singer and enjoys singing the national anthem. She sings it alone in the shower and driving in her car. Mary works at a high school and at a faculty meeting. They asked if anyone could sing the national anthem at the track meet. Mary was embarrassed and said no. Okay, so this would be masking. 
Again, by now you should know she's hiding her skills, so it's masking. All right, guys, well, I hope you found this video really helpful in identifying the difference between masking and overshadowing. Like I said, the purpose of these videos that I'm making every day this month for the month of April is that I want you to crush this exam. I, I know how important this is that you get this out of your way so you can go live your life and help kids. And you know, if you are struggling with it, I just wanna let you know that it does not mean anything at all literally nothing about how good of a professional you are and where your heart is. It's this thing that does not define you, that's in your way that you have to get through. And I want to be here to help make it easier. So again, the goal of these videos is by the end of this video, you should be 100% clear on the difference between masking and overshadowing. So we're going to pick 30 topics this month. We're going to go through them together. And you're going to know those 30 topics. So if you get a question and you have to pick it those apart, now you know you can get it, you got it right. So you're just gonna check it off your list. Everyone just check it right now if you have your stuff printed up, if you have your outline printed up, right? And just know you know what this is now. And so this is one less thing you have to worry about on your exam. Uh, if you like the way I explain these answers to the questions, I do have two full mock exams for sale on my website, hopeeducationservices.com. They both have explanations, video explanations, me explaining the answers to all of the questions, 175 questions. And uh, it's about 10 hours worth of instruction. They're only $50 each. So, and actually if you bundle them together, I give you an even bigger discount. I give you a discount if you buy them together. So check that out, check out my mock packages on my website and I will see you guys tomorrow on tomorrow's video.